It all started on a road trip when I was a teenager. My dad rigged a bike rack to the back of a trailer we pulled with our station wagon. Somewhere in Arizona, on a highway, we had a car come alongside us, honking madly and motioning for us to pull over. We learned that our bikes had fallen off, and they'd been run over by a Greyhound bus. <laughs> so one of the bikes was repairable. So when we got to Santa Fe, New Mexico, we went to a repair shop. My dad wrote his name on the repair ticket, and the man behind the counter looked at that and said, Don? Don Oside? You and I are cousins. This surprised me so much, and it got me thinking, if I'm related to this random guy, who else am I related to? <laughs> Look around you. How closely might you be related to the other people in this room? Day. Do you know your great-grandparents' names? You have eight of them. I bet you don't know their names. You can see that it doesn't take many generations for us to lose all connection to our past and what we share. Imagine in a few generations that you too may be forgotten. My grandmother gave me this photograph of a painting of her grandmother. And she only knew the name of the one grandmother, Mary McEwen. That was it. The photo intrigued me enough that I've been on a quest all these years to find out who these people were. Why did they move from Scotland to Chicago? What were their hopes and their dreams? Twenty years ago, I had to travel to car courthouses and libraries to research. And today I can be at home in my Snuggie and my slippers, and I can view obituaries, birth, marriage, death certificates. I can even look at find a grave. <laughs> and what might you learn from an old census record? I learned that this young girl's grandson became an actor. He starred in motion pictures as well as the television shows Father Knows Best and Marcus Welby, MD. Well, in my research, I discovered that my grandmother would watch him on television, but she had no idea that she was watching her second cousin. Our connections can be even um, closer than that. Steve Jobs later learned that the owner of a restaurant where he'd eaten several times, a man with whom he had shaken hands, was his birth father. And our connections can be even closer than that. But the most exciting thing is our DNA, and it's opening up a whole new world for us of finding our lost connections. I took a DNA test myself, and I found that of the 125,000 or so other people who'd tested with the company 23andMe, that there was a, my nearest relative was a man, Phil, other than my brother. It said we're possible third cousins. And I know that might be a tenuous connection. And I don't normally go flying across the country to meet strangers. But I flew to Texas for a visit. We flipped through his photograph collection. He had a box of photos. And we came to the back of one. And I recognized some of the names on the back. And imagine my surprise when we flipped over the photograph. And I saw this. <laughs> and the names all matched my research. So. I want to leave you with a thought today, and that is to label your photographs. <laughs> Ask the questions. Share your stories before they disappear. And leave clues so that you won't be forgotten. 
And if Facebook were around in 1848, And remember, life is short and family is forever. Thank you.